packets. That's so it's the same thing. Another, uh, Let's see what and also, if I had started with the measurement of dynamical variable V, the H int will have a different kind of, that is, I started with yeah, V. Yes. I may not end up with the same kind of uh, measurement uh, results. Uh, that is, that is alpha of, prime and alpha double prime may not come there. Yeah. That is, if I had started with the H int, yeah, yeah. which contains a B and some P, P Y or yeah, something yeah. like that, yes. then I am not ensured that I will get this kind yeah. of alpha prime and alpha double prime. It no, may it will be, it may, may not be. It yes. most likely it will not be. Yeah. In fact, that also shows. Yeah. Yeah, I think the conclusion is that you cannot regard this as, in general, as measurement corresponding to another set of It is, but for that. Because those are not our so. no, but, but for special cases, it okay, is. Okay, special cases. Case, uh, you can always no, choose we'll that. Really. And also A and B can be not yeah. But this one case is enough to show that. Yes. Okay, okay. But, yeah, the problem. But it weakens the kind of... Yeah, but, but the problem... Yes. Yes. So it shows one counterexample. <laughs> yeah. You have to show the contradiction. Yeah. So that's why this problem of effort basis, the equivalence between the basis states, many approaches towards the measurement problem try to break this equivalence by introducing suitable That has been the one popular but I'm not going historically because we have a short of time we have to cover, so I'm not going to the historical things. But so I may just remark that uh, how Bohr, what we refer to as Copenhagen interpretation, if it is following Bohr, Bohr had just, by fear, considered that apparatus should be treated classically and observe system quantum mechanically without caring to specify what at what level and so on. So he tried to avoid that uh, uh, the measurement problem by emphasizing that measurements must be described by using classical concepts and so on. So I'm not going, but I come to the modern times of the measurement problem the way I have presented. These two quotations are particularly very relevant. They capture the core of it. First is the spec and then by Bell to emphasize the point that already what I have said that that's why I made that remark that in the wave function argument, whatever happens, that coordinates, it's not actually the observed coordinate like in the Newtonian description or classical theory. So, so, so in the classical theory, you can always include the observer because by setting up a correspondence between what the observer observes and what elements are present in the theory. But in quantum theory, as I have emphasized, the existence of a measurement outcome has no correspondence with any element in the theory. That I'm left still with a superposition. So my pointer, position of a pointer in the middle at the end of a single run, that has no correspondence with any element in the theory. The theory only has wave function and nothing else. So, and, and the wave function also, if it is not in a mixed state, the middle is not this position or that position. So what we have as an experience cannot be correlated some function of the coordinates present in the theory. So that is not possible in quantum mechanics. And in that sense, observer is essentially outside the standard framework of quantum mechanics. That is the fundamental. Because as he rightly said, you sometimes people say observation, quantum mechanics has taught us that measurement is important. Of course, classically also measurement is important. As he well said, what is interesting if not experience? But this is the subtle point. And also what I, the other aspect of the measurement problem which I said, the meaning of what we mean by pure state. So those who try to avoid the measurement problem at the end of that measurement interaction, that pure state, what is, I will come to that also. There are various resolutions of the measurement problem attempted by saying that this pure state behaves as if it were a mixed state. That kind of argument. So on that point, Leggett's famous remark and the, can the meaning of the formalism change radically just because the evidence has disappeared? Because the interference between these two terms is difficult to observe. This uh, superposition I do. And as I will, uh, I, I, I will now indicate the various resolutions of the measurement problem, particularly based on the decoherence approach, mainly argue that since interference between different outcomes cannot occur, the final state, the system apparatus combined state, can be considered to be one or the other. So, because the evidence is not there of the 
pure state in terms of interference effect, one can interpret the pure state as if it were a mixed state. So that is how the decoherence approach tends to address the measurement problem. And, uh, and, the, and the point that Leggett is making is that just because the evidence has disappeared, can one change the interpretation of a state in, within the theoretical framework and graph? And, and this analogy he gives that if in the middle of a murder trial, if some evidence has disappeared, the uh, accused does not become automatically innocent. So I have already covered all these things. So this, this is done, like I have already mentioned the basic content. So I am skipping all this. Now, if you come to these modern attempts that are suggested for the resolution of the measurement problem. Broadly, they can be categorized as trying to change the framework of quantum mechanics by either modifying the formalism or enlarging the standard interpretation. There are two possibilities, or both, change both the formalism and the interpretation. And as I've said that, uh, uh, of course, it is now, there have been many such approaches suggested. I will just make remarks on some of them which are more popularly discussed. And a key requirement I have already stressed is to ensure the objective reality of an individual outcome. And, and, the, next, and the important new direction of study regarding the measurement problem is to probe to what extent this, all these non-orthodox approaches can be empirically studied and what, and, and what empirically relevant implications they may have. And in this context, I will mention some ideas. So first of all, as an example of a non-orthodox approach, it was historically also the first non-orthodox approach that was put forward apart from the collapse idea uh, that was in 1952. Bohm. So in the Bohm model, what happens is basically is that Apart from the wave function, wave function is not taken as the whole story, but apart from the wave function, it is the ontological position coordinate of a particle is introduced as a fundamental entity in a theory apart from the wave function. That means that this x, the, the, the position coordinate has a definite value whether it is measured or not. Then according to Bohm model, when you write psi of x of t, the, the argument x, which I emphasize in the standard framework, is not an actual position coordinate. In the Bohm model, it is an actual position coordinate. And this actual position coordinate has the pre-measured value same as the post-measured value. This is postulated in the Bohm model. And this also uh, was related to the EPR argument, where the EPR made the argument that wave function is it's an incomplete description physical reality. So that was Bohm's approach that to complete that description, you need to add to a function some additional element. And the motivation for considering position coordinate to be the preferred coordinate was that all measurements are essentially at the end of the day in terms of position coordinates. All measurements. That was the argument. In fact, if you look at the measurement of, like the spin measurement that is done by the energy measurement energy. At the end of the day, either you have dots on the screen or, or position of the meter needle. So at the end of the day, it's all position measurement. In reference also, you have the free spacing, mass measure, mass spectrometer, all these things. And does it also apply to some experiments where you measure current, some sort of current? For example, in superconductor. Electric current, the ampere, ampere, you have the meter needle displacement and so on. But of course, one can uh, debate about that whether this is sufficiently general and covers all types of questions. But I am only stating what is the basic assumption. And this assumption is also involved in the decoherence model and also in the collapse model. So this assumption is, in a sense, well, most of the popular non orthodox approaches take this assumption. And of course, the bond rule is retained in. Uh, Bohm's model. And then the equation of motion is uh, set up in Bohm's model such that initially the ensemble, the rho is given by the initial 
what size square. Then after time evolution, according to Schrodinger equation, rho will agree with psi boss square at any time t. Now, given all these requirements, and if you write the probability current density j as rho v, because if you imagine the probability current as an actual current of particles, then j is rho v, where v is that pre-measured value velocity in the Bohm model. So it's an actual pre-measurement ontological velocity. So the equation of continuity here has a more, it's an ontological content. Whereas in quantum mechanics, the equation of continuity is just a probability, flow of probability at an epistemological level. So then if you write psi simply as in this form, and then it, it can be deduced from the equation of continuity that the Bohmian velocity, that is the pre-measured velocity V, is given by this equation. And this is related to the wave function psi. So as psi evolves in time, V also evolves in time. So, and so it gives a trajectory in real space time. So it's a trajectory in terms of position and time. And, uh, and so I mean, and using this equation of motion, one can try to understand the quantum phenomena in terms of real trajectories in space time. Real trajectories means in uh, real within single quotes that within the Bohmian model, this is what the ontological trajectories are. But of course, when you do measurement, if you want to measure those trajectories, any one may, you have to measure positions at two different times on the same evolving wave function. It is not possible because the first measurement will always disturb the wave function. So these Bohm trajectories are not directly measurable, but Bohm trajectories serve as useful heuristic models to understand quantum interference, double slit interference, how does it occur, how. So in terms of trajectories, so what is happening between the emission of a particle and detection of a particle, you can set up a consistent scheme to understand in close. That phenomenon in terms of trajectories in space-time, consistent with Schrodinger equation. So that was what uh, uh, was, was uh, the proponents of the Copenhagen interpretation, standard interpretation, and many years later also, people like Feynman and others has asserted that perhaps Copenhagen interpretation is the unique interpretation, consistent interpretation possible with Schrodinger equation. But Bohm's model was the first counter example. That's why historically they also important. And you said that you can set up a self-consistent picture without violating the predictions of quantum mechanics but which gives you an understanding of what's going on and underlying the concept of quantum phenomena. Uh, these trajectories are different from uh, so-called weak trajectories. Uh, yes, yes. Um, we, I know what you are meaning, weak trajectories, but one has to again define. These trajectories are well defined ontologically. I think the, the concept of weak trajectory that you are referring to in the context of Steinberg experiments and so on, but have not yet been defined that unambiguous. There are debates about it. But what is meant by weak trajectories? So the claim that weak trajectories are the Bohmian trajectories uh, is not yet some, not yet conclusive, I believe. Some some people believe it's conclusive. Yes. But that's a weak measurement. Whether weak measurement provides a tool for measuring the Bohmian trajectories is an interesting new question that has come up that provides empirical relevance. Uh, yeah, I am coming to that. In fact, uh, I am just referring to this and not in the context of the measurement problem. Sorry, uh, so, sorry just. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. What exactly is meant by. It's my words. What is meant by. Use the word ontological. Uh, 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 it's good, good, good. Uh, uh, I, uh, I know ontology, the term ontology, epistemology. It's, what, uh, it's a philosophy. Ontology means something. To put it very simply, independent of measurement, things which are happening independent of observer. So you just declare that there is something like that? Yes. Absolutely. But in standard interpretation, Copenhagen there declared it is not possible to say anything. So that it, it was thought to be that if you try to say anything, it will be not consistent with the quantum formulas. That was the strongest statement. In fact, it was not only a statement that you cannot talk about it, that if you talk about it. You cannot talk about it in a consistent way, entirely compatible with the quantum formalism. So, so what, we, what one was calling realism in some sense? 
Yes, yes, yes. Ontology is uh, realism. The term realism, in that sense. Statistical. But term realism has also another other implications. Theoretical mechanics is one example. One example of. Epistemic, I mean, there is this epistemic and then not a lot of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So epistemology is what Bonian, the Copenhagen intervention, that, uh, let me put it more specifically, the bond rule, if you have to state bond rule, you say the probability of finding the particle within this position is given by psi mod square. That is according to the Copenhagen I. This is the example I choose. So it is an epistemological statement, probability of finding. Now in Bohmian model, what Bohm did was to replace the word finding the probability of a particle being actually present. So he interpreted the Bond's rule as probability of a particle being actually present. So if you interpret Bond's rule as actually present, then you derive those Bohmian trajectories according to the equation. But uh, how do you know if it's actually present in the Bohmian model? Yes, you, you know, the Bohmian model is set up in a way that if you measure, you'll get it. But because the opposite is there. Yes, there. Because it assumes the pre measured value is the same, same as the for, for position. But how do you, how do, how do they know that? I mean, you now, how do you, it, it is a hypothesis, like, right? Uh, like in Bond rule, it's a hypothesis. So it is an additional ingredient. I mean, it's like asking how do you know that this piece of wood is made of atoms? Even if you don't measure it. We don't, I'm not going to measure it, but I know it's made of atoms. But I think this piece of wood is more classical than the kind of things you need. It doesn't matter. I mean, what is it inside is a, is a description of reality irrespective of whether I'm going to measure it or not. I mean, that's, I, I can't see, I think that trying not to, put, you know, trying not to give a reality to something just because we are not present to check it yeah, the was a very, the point I mean, point that's, point that's point really what all of us are more about. than the kind of things we are really dealing with. No, no, I'm saying thing. inside it. I mean, yeah. I'm saying even if you went and looked at molecular structures inside, mm -hmm. I'm asking you, I would say, I would, but then I, mean, I, I think know. that that's the reality. No, but you wouldn't know if you didn't know of this piece of wood from another context. I mean, it's, it, we, we right. don't have to. But I mean, I don't have to do talk it in this, this morning, context, right? No, no, your talk this morning had similar aspects. That, you know, because you have this ensemble of measurements that you probably have already done, that gives you this impression that that will happen even if you don't do it for this particular piece of wood. Sure, but right. I can still, therefore, I can use that to make a statement about. You can, yeah. Or I can make a model that will ma then make a statement so about. So you're using something that measures the past. That's a little bit different from what uh, you just said. Uh, no, no, no. The, here the spirit is that can you say what is? Can you give a description of events occurring in space and time? Mm -hmm. Can you set up a story of this? Without measure. That, that, that a description which does not depend on right. measurement, independent of measurement. Yeah. That description is self-consistent, self as I have written, and consistent mm -hmm. with the quantum formalism, Schrodinger equation. That is irrespective of whether similar measurements have been done uh, yeah, yeah. earlier. Uh, yeah. And yeah. it's a little bit different because here we might be basing it on our preconceived notion that this world is probably made of atoms. Yeah. No, oh, here, here maybe there are other Issues other well. issues, other properties of wood, like the then one would say, like even Feynman in his lecture says, the very the stability of matter itself because of the Pauli principle, the table is not falling off because of the Pauli principle. So whenever I am giving a lecture here, the table, the stability. I mean, even things like observations of astronomical observations, you're not actually taking a measuring instrument and projecting anything. You're doing inference, right? Yeah, no, no. You're making inferences yeah. about things that are there, which you, so sure. you have a picture of reality, you have a picture of atoms there, and you've got spectra which you read here, and you this say, well, is, this is, of course, irrespective of any observation or measurement. This is like stating that this happens. Right. So, so the point is that we do this all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, that's right, this is yeah. ontology. It's not unusual. That's no, it's ontology. It's the ontology. But, 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 but when I'm saying what is HNN, what the Copenhagen asserted was that this ontological exercise is not possible at you know, all. At all. Okay. So that it is possible to set up a consistent. So that means that verification of the quantum rules or the success of quantum theory does not mean that I am not entitled to speak about events irrespective of which. But what, what we are taught in the textbooks or, or in all discussions that you are not in all these questions about. So this epistemology? Uh, epistemology. Is that right? Yeah. So that is uh, the Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Okay, the, the probability of finding what can be at. So what I observe. 
So they ruled out that no ontological description was possible. Ontology, so ontology is part of the whole realism package. That is essentially. But is the measurement problem still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Uh, yeah, this is what I meant. <laughs> the book. Like in fact, what I'm emphasizing the motivation for all these approaches is because to address the measurement problem, the emergence of classicality from quantum theory, apart from the ontological need, which uh, Sumati and Raphael have been repeatedly stressing, the need to answer questions at the individual, to try to construct an event-by-event -event description, to not to be satisfied with uh, an abstract mathematical. I think related to this is also trying to describe closest. You yeah, yeah, of course. External structures. Uh, and, 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 and yes, that is another point I should stress because I come to that. All this discussion that why the definiteness of an outcome is not realized, that is all with respect to a closed system. So, in a closed system, you have no measurement according to quantum mechanics. No measurement outcome is possible. Because you can't interact. No, closed system, system is interactive with the apparatus, but the system apparatus combination is isolated. isolated. Even at the apparatus, you include detector and so on, no matter how you extend it. The original idea that Heisenberg had also that if you extend the description, maybe you will be able to include everything and then it will be able to ensure the definiteness of an individual outcome. But, and it does not matter why you put the cut, the famous Heisenberg cut. But that is, they miss the point that entanglement <coughs> remains even if to extend that. Now it is very instructive how these models try to attack the measurement problem and why they are deficient still. So the Bobian model, the measurement problem, the, the motivation as I said, the positions are the <laughs> this location and because I am constrained to be here and I am also constrained to move in, in space so the probability of this happening is quite large. <laughs> So here, uh, as I have already st stated, uh, uh, it is the, 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 observe, the property of the measuring apparatus which serves as the apparatus variable in the Bohmian model is essentially the position variable of a macro object which is serving as an apparatus, for example, the center of mass coordinate of a point. So it is serving as the in indicator variable. And all instrument outputs are in the end readings in the position space. So if one assumes that, and, and the Bohmian model, the spirit is that since I have introduced ontology for the position at the micro level, it is a seamless description going over to them. There is no division between the micro and the micro. Since the micro has the position independent of observation, macro is automatic. It's all. So quantum mechanics universal theory. So it's a seamless description. And uh, so, and the definite outcome at the end of a single measurement run is denoted by the ontological position variable associated with the apparatus. So, since already we have assumed the ontology at the micro level, at the macro level it is automatically guaranteed. So, in that sense, Bohmian model argues that there is a correspondence between the definite outcome of an individual measurement and ontological position coordinate introduced in the theory of the function. Remember that John Bell's quotation, what he said that the, what, because my observation should relate to some function of coordinates already present in the theory. So, Bohmian model does this in this way, but now I am coming to the more circular point. But you remember in the Bohmian model, wave function is also of crucial input. The complete, the complete initial state is specified by wave function as well as position coordinate. And the equation of motion for the position coordinate is derived from the wave function. So in that sense, wave function plays a central role in Bohmian model. But for example, for the wavelength measurement, you can just infer it by color. And even when you are measuring uh, current in a device, you can uh, couple it to a LED, variable color LED, and you can infer it by the color of light emitted by the In that mm -hmm. case, where, where is the collapse taken to? Is no, it collapse, uh, in, in the Bohmian model, there is no collapse. So, uh, it will ultimately uh, say that, that it will one has to... Position. Uh, sorry, so position. Good. Position. So, so the, uh, this, you are bringing in a human element there. So, the human <laughs> eye one has to model it basically to see where the color is. 
is a detected, some de detection has to take place. But that kind of detection yeah, at, yeah, at, yeah. at a superficial level seems not to involve any position. Yeah. I, I know that these kind of questions can crop up, but this kind of questions um, at the end of the day depends on how you, you have to model it through sufficient details. Then the question becomes precise. You have to go. For example, there have been people working in the collapse model trying to model the way we, when we perceive an outcome, our human sensory system, how well it collapsed. Girard, the others had their papers. So they have to do this analysis of So it's a complex analysis. It's, it's again a detector, and like in the EPR, locality loophole here, when is the measurement completed? When my eye, eye is always making a measurement, observation. So this observation process, when it is completed here, it's all this kind of thing. But what is, what is uh, important is that the, there is this subtle point. I already said the measurement outcome has this property of being non-invasively measurable, like the center of mass of a point. So there is this conceptual question that what is the difference between the status of the ontological reality associated with the position <coughs> coordinate of a measuring device and the position of an observed particle? So that at the measuring device level, you can observe the outcome non-invasive. But that at the direct, at the particle level, the micro level particle, the position is not, in that sense, you by fiat assume that it is non-invasively measurable because Bohmian model assumes that post-measured is same as pre measured but that is by fiat. And I think that's by assumption. That's the assumption. That's yeah. the assumption. And the purpose of that assumption is that to ensure that, OK, at the macro level also, I can then assume the position of a meter needle mm -hmm. to, be, to be the same as the unobserved position, same as the observed position. So, so that there is no need for a cut between yeah. the two levels on this question. On this question, that whether the, the status of position coordinate at the micro and the macro level. Why is that? I'm not understanding the criticism. Now, the criticism was the point that uh, you're right. It is not a criticism in that sense. It, it, that the point. This is a critical point there. The status of an ontological reality at the Bohmian model, because it ensures that the micro, in the in its formulation itself, gives position a preferred status, avoids this problem. So giving this special status to position is very crucial in Korea that I'm trying to emphasize in solving the measurement problem. One may say that is the price one has to pay. There's always a price tag, as someone has said, in solving quantum measurement problem. We have to put in something extra, assume something extra. Now, in the Bovian model, this macroscopically distinct states of an apparatus is characterized by position localized states with their peaks well separated. This is the criteria. I am going step by step in Bohmian model how it addresses those attributes of the measurement outcome which I have sketched earlier. So this is about the non-invasive measurability of the measurement outcome. So this is the Bohmian stance. And the macroscopically distinct states of an apparatus are taken with the position localized states with the peaks well separated of the apparatus. <coughs> But then there is a criticism of this aspect in the sense there's always the problem of mutually mutual overlap between the Gaussian wave factors. But always, of course, one can make that overlap as small as one likes. But then always there is a question of principle involved. That there may be always, a, even if there is a non-zero overlap, it may be negligible. But in principle, non-zero, then there is always there are some cases in which no definite outcome is registered but the pointer has no definite position. Now, what does it mean in terms of realist description that a pointer is in having no definite position? So one may say that in that sense, you are not solving the quantum measurement problem in principle to a fully rigorous level. The cat problem appears at some level. And then there is the question that since the wave function is also an essential ingredient in Bohmian model, at the level of wave function, there is always the possibility of interference between the macroscopically distinct states of the apparatus. So if you consider system apparatus to be closed, then how do you rule out the possibility of interference between the macroscopically distinct states of the apparatus? And unless you rule out this possibility of interference, 
then is these two aspects sufficient to solve the mission? The, the, the point that you do is in this or that. It's not sufficient. You have to all ensure at the way function level, there should be no interference between the two outcomes. Measure is something like that. So this is a critical point that since Bobeyan model has both position and wave function, 